Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video for you guys, and this is another episode of Blips for everybody. So this episode is going to be on the Buckling Spring Keyboard Switch, which was originally developed by IBM. I'm going to go over some of the other history related to it, as well as how it functions, and some interesting facts regarding the Buckling Spring Switch. It's not a particularly complicated switch, so in order to keep the episode not ridiculously short, that's why we're kind of covering a little bit of other sections uh, in relation to this switch. Now, for those of you who don't know, the buckling spring switch is a switch that's still used on some keyboards today. More on that in a moment. But uh, it was developed originally by IBM. And it is a keyboard key switch. So the key cap mounts on top of that. And that's actually what moves and gives you the feel and what, what actuates in order to send the signal, so to speak, to the computer to actually say you pressed a key. And so there are different kinds of switches out there for those that maybe don't know. This is one variant of them that's been around for a very long time and has proven itself uh, pretty crazily good for a very long time. There's a lot of enthusiasts that still stick around it for good reason, in my opinion. So as I said, it was originally developed by IBM for the Model F keyboard. Now the Model F keyboard was pretty popular and was used in a lot of point of sale systems and uh, scientific research institutions and other stuff like that. But uh, the more common one was the IBM Model M, which replaced it later. And this was more commonly seen in people's homes as well as a more widely wide distribution in terms of like industrial use and stuff like that. And there are a few differences between the uh, Model F and the Model M, even though they're both a buckling spring switch keyboard and I'll get to the differences between those in a moment. Later on as uh, IBM continued to make these keyboards they eventually sold off their keyboard division to Lexmark, a company that a lot of you have probably heard of, maybe some of you haven't, and so they sold the, they sold the company to Lexmark which continued to manufacture the products and after a while kind of gave up on it so to speak. A company called Unicomp, or a company was started called Unicomp, rather, by some Lexmark employees, they actually purchased the original tooling equipment that Lexmark had, which they bought it from IBM, in order to create the keyboards. So, uh, unknown to a lot of people, Unicomp keyboards are not remakes of the IBM Model M. They are IBM Model M's. They're made with the actual same tools and same machinery and everything. So they're basically identical. They are identical, effectively identical to the IBM originals. And that's what makes them so special. Now some of the tooling equipment might be getting worn out. So quality actually might be a little bit lower now than it used to be just because the tools are being used so consistently, the machining equipment for it. But point is, they are actually IBM keyboards. They're not just remakes. And, uh, you know, there's been some design tweaks and stuff like that, but it is the original equipment, which is really interesting in my opinion. So to get into how a buckling spring keyboard switch functions, we first have to talk about the flipper, which in my opinion is probably the most important, or hammer, or there's other terms that are used for it. I like to call it a flipper because it does a little flip, even though that's not really the proper name for it. Uh, hammer is technically the correct name. But basically, you've got this little piece of uh, plastic inside, and this is for the Model F, and I'll explain the difference uh, between that and the Model M in a moment. But you basically got this flat little flipper inside that is well under the key, right? And this flipper can rock back and forth, and its default position is is rocked forward, all right? And you've got, so forward towards like if this were the front of the keyboard, and you've got a spring that mounts to that that sticks up from this flipper. And the spring then goes into a little insertion on the keycap, and that's what keeps the spring from moving around inside the keycap. And when you press down on the keycap, it pushes the spring and compresses it to a point at an angle where the spring will buckle, hence the name buckling spring keyboard switch. And when that spring buckles in terms of it literally just bends in, it pushes weight on the flipper towards the back side, which flips it back, which hits the circuit board, the capacitive circuit board in the case of the Model F, and that's what you know effectively actuates the key. That's what sends the signal to the computer, as I said, to put it in kind of simple terms. But basically, you've got a spring that just pushes weight forward that flips it forward. Now, the reason this is important is because it is a very sudden and very uh, specific feel that happens when that spring buckles, and it also makes a specific noise. And that is kind of the, was kind of the first tactile feeling keyboard where when it actually, when you actually get some feedback on your finger where you feel the key loosen up, like you've pushed it down, that is actually when you've effectively sent that keystroke into the computer. And that's part of what made it special is a lot of like uh, rubber dome based keyboards and the like that have 
have a physical rubber dome that you push down, you can push them down to where the dome folds in before it actually touches the circuit board on the bottom before it actually uh, uh, is fully actuated. And so it feels like you pressed the key down, but you didn't. And the buckling spring keyboard was one of the first to do anything crazy where you could actually properly feel it. Now, there were some before the Model F keyboards that were based on um, other spring technologies and stuff that were generally made by IBM that in some people's opinions are better, but they weren't as common as the Model F and especially not the Model M. To get to the difference between the Model F and the Model M keyboard, Basically, at the back side of that flipper, the Model F is a capacitive-based flipper uh, and, and capacitive-based contact. So the flipper physically flips down and makes contact with a PCB under there. And that gives it a very uh, kind of unique click that's very uh, solid and sudden. There's not really a, a ringy tone to it. It's very, very flat sounding. It'd be like, you know, if you dropped something flat, perfectly flat onto a table, not at a weird angle or anything. It's just very specific sound. Whereas the Model M differs in a couple of ways. One of those being that it actually has a membrane underneath that flipper and that's pushing it down. So it's not quite as tactile feeling, but the feel isn't really that much different. What's really different is the sound. And some people actually do prefer the Model M's sound. Uh, I personally prefer the Model F sound, but it's really hard to get a hold of a proper Model F. Uh, more on that in a moment, though. So I, I actually have a couple of Unicomp Model M keyboards, and I do love them. I mean, they're they're very great, and they, they're wonderful to type on. I like them more than other switches that I've used out there. They're incredible for typing. For gaming, they're not my personal preference, but... Uh, I do more typing than I do gaming, and that's what's important to me. Now, the other difference between the Model F and the Model M versions of the Buckling Spring Keyboard Switch is some of the quality of parts. The Model F is physically a higher quality, like technically a higher quality unit. There are more metal parts used and stronger plastics. It's not a super drastic difference, and really realistically, the Model Ms are known to last so long, I don't think it's a reason that you should be like, oh, I'm buying a Model F because it'll last longer. You should really buy it for the feel and primarily the sound, but they do technically last longer. They're technically a little bit more reliable because they're using higher quality parts. They're also a little less likely to break if you, you know, were to drop something on the keyboard maybe or whatever, as an example, do various things that could damage the keyboard and, and potentially break the plastic parts on the switch that the Model M has. The Model F version is going to be a little bit stronger of a, uh, uh, stronger parts and it's not going to break as easily. So a few fun facts really to kind of add to the end here that is related to the Buckling Spring keyboard switch is uh, the, the first one I actually want to mention is there's a lot of enthusiasts that still widely consider it the best switch out there unless you've played with some of the other uh, like beam spring switches from IBM but those are so old and there's not really remakes of like modernized keyboards of it or or even non remakes you know originals or anything like that um, so it's not really one you can get a hold of but generally speaking out of keyboards you can get a hold of the Model M being the easiest because Unicomp continues to manufacture that it's considered the best typing experience, and I actually tend to agree with that. So I've tried a pretty huge variety of different switches, a lot of them from Cherry, a lot of them from Kale. I've tried some Gatoron switches. I've used quite a few different ones out there, and nothing really, in my opinion, compares properly to the Buckling Spring switch on my Model M. Uh, that's just my opinion. Obviously, some people like different feels, and if you're a gamer, you're probably going to go for a more linear switch and not a tactile switch like the Buckling Spring switches. But just an interesting fact that a lot of people continue to buy them because of the fact that they feel so good to type on. I won't be going back to any other kind of switch anytime soon. Now, I'm willing to try others, but I'm not willing to make that my permanent machine and permanent keyboard use until I actually find something that I think is better, which I have not yet. Now, I have not tried the Kale Box Thick Click Switches, which were made by Novel Keys, and that is a uh, switch that's pretty comparable from what I've heard to the Model M and Model F switches. Um, at least, it modern, it's the most modern switch that actually compares to the feeling of the Model M switch. Now, it's something I'd like to try at some point, but Something to keep in mind if you're looking for more modern features like potentially RGB as well as maybe a 60% keyboard or something like that. That is going to be from what I understand the most similar to the Buckling Spring switch. And so if you're interested in trying out something like that, they're pretty heavy, just like Buckling Springs, that would be the direction to go in that case. 
Now, another interesting fact is most of the buckling spring keyboards, in fact, all of the ones that I've seen out there, the ones made by Unicomp, as well as the ones made by IBM, use really, really thick, really high quality double shot PBT keycaps. What this means is basically the keycap itself is made out of a much higher quality material than a lot of other keycaps. A lot of keycaps are ABS that you get on mechanical keyboards. And even versus a lot of other PBT keycaps, they are a higher quality. They, um, they last longer, they're thicker, and they have a really strong stem that goes down inside the buckling spring. Uh, there's basically a hole that it goes down inside and that's where the spring is, is inside that hole. And so it's a really, really, really solid unit. I don't think you'll ever really have to worry about damaging or breaking one of these uh, uh, keycaps. They're really, really solid. So that's something interesting to know is if you're really gonna be typing a lot, if you're a journalist or something, it's gonna be a keyboard that really lasts you a long time. I've had ABS keycaps completely fall apart on lots of keyboards and I have had some issues with PBT keycaps on some keyboards, but not super commonly. Uh, it's mostly the ABS ones that fall apart, but these are so thick and so well built. It's kind of incredible in my personal opinion. Now, I mentioned earlier about buying modern Model Fs. I said they're harder to get a hold of. Well, interestingly enough, there is a website, uh, I believe it's just modelfkeyboard.com, but just look up Model F Keyboard on Google and you'll, you'll find it. Uh, but there's, there's a guy that actually is remaking the Model F. He's getting, uh, He's redesigning it from scratch, so to speak, but it is using the original idea behind the Model F. So it is effectively a Model F when they come out, albeit not using the same tooling process like the Unicomp Model M keyboards. But it's pretty impressive. They're very expensive. They start at, uh, it's, it's over $300 if I remember correctly, and it's gonna take a while before people actually receive them. But if you're interested in the better sound, and in particular, if you're interested in a 60% keyboard, the, those options are available through that website. So if that's something you want to jump on and you have the cash to spend and the time to wait for it, because it's going to take a while, it's not some big company or something like that, and they're being manufactured and shipped, and so you know you have to wait for your production run to happen. And they're doing two production runs from what I understand. I don't know if they're going to continue, but I know they've raised a lot of money. So who knows if they do? Maybe if they do and it becomes a thing that you can just purchase, I might end up getting one. I just don't really want to spend the money and then wait for one. But if you're somebody that wants to do that, that is available. Now, I personally would say try a Model M first, see how you like it, and if you like it enough, then maybe consider buying a Model F. Probably don't just go out and buy a Model F because the Model M gives you a similar enough experience to understand if that's the direction you want to go or if you want something that's maybe not as heavy, not as loud, and not as tactile. Now, thank you everybody for watching. That was a, a pretty solid overview there, I think, of the uh, Buckling Spring Keyboard Switch by IBM. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as check out all the links down in the description that we've got there. We've got links to our Patreon page, which if you're interested in giving a monthly contribution, that is where that is. We've got links to our website. We've got uh, links to our other various channels and social media and the like. And obviously don't forget to leave a comment as well and let me know how you guys think I did. Th thank you everybody and have a wonderful day.